So today I'm gonna to show you how to do a service on an ADP unit heater. Um, not a huge fan of the brand, as uh, just the quality long-term I've had some issues with. So when you first come up to this, if it's running, I would suggest turning off the stat. If that's not an option like me, it's way down there. Um, I then turn the gas off, boom. It's gonna eventually lock out because of flame failure. Um, the blower will keep running to cool down the heat exchanger after about 30 seconds to a minute. I would then disconnect power yourself. Um, right before you disconnect power though, make sure to check the board, see if you have any alarms, any codes, because uh, that's just a really good practice to have when you're working on some bigger units and chillers. You just wanna make sure you always know what's going on before you turn it off and it resets. Uh, next, I like to brush the unit out everywhere like you can see there's quite a bit of dust i've already brushed out most of this unit if it builds up you can't read name plates um, i'm gonna go through this quite quickly as i don't like when there's long videos um, next step would be to come around here and check the heat exchanger for any cracks in the tube um, the most common place is on the bends of the first corner after that you want to pull out your igniter just here and your flame sensor there. Check them out, clean them up. I already removed these, started cleaning it, not done. Okay. Um, if you have a lot of time and it's allowed by the customer, uh, I like to remove the Venturi tubes. Uh, I'll explain what those are another day. Uh, as they start to get build up and the flame has difficulty jumping across, so you'd pull those out and clean them. Okay. And then I'd say that's the last kind of off check for a quick service. Next, you want to do your standing pressure and running pressure. So you'll put your manometer up there and on this is a propane system. So between 11 and 14 inches of water column, um, you want that to be in that range where you're running and standing. And then on your outlet on this unit, there's a chart for the propane. And we are 3,300 feet, so we're in this category with 100,000 BTU, so we're 9.5 inches water column. Okay, when you're also running, we wanna take flame signal. Um, you would hook your meter in series with the flame sensor and go to microamps, find your reading. You next want to check your amp draw on the combustion motor and listen to hear if you hear any knocks, any grinding, any odd sounds as they tend to fail or bearings go because of the heat. Um, we're not gonna bother with the pressure switches you don't have enough time in this service, but you would hook your manometer up and check the water column you're getting just to see if your combustion motor is keeping up. Um, you also want to take an amp draw. People always forget of your blower motor. So it's quite dirty. I'm going to clean it up. Um, so always want to make sure you check the blower motor. People forget it all the time and the customer hears the blower motor the most. And if it's whining or squealing or something, they're going to complain. Um, you can do a temporize from the back to the front if you want, and you would use your, take your two temperatures and then subtract them to see what your temporize is, but not a huge deal since it's open air, no ducting. Um, yeah, I would say that's the main checks as we went through it pretty fast. You'll see some units that have ducted intakes here that are in a place where there's chemicals or stuff you don't want to suck in, or it's just a good practice, usually recommend it. You can see the discharge there. Um, there's much more we could go into, but today that's all we're going to talk about just because I don't want to overload you guys and have a 20 minute long video on very meticulous things. All right, any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Thanks.